Roland Williams, and in our main event of the evening, Jesse James Leha against Mark Fernandez, 10 rounds in the featherweight division. Good evening, and we welcome you to Houston, Texas. I'm Bob Papa. Glad you can join us for another edition of the Pro Boxing Tour on Sports Channel America. And tonight, I'm joined by a former champion and former gold medal winner with the United States, Mark Breland. Mark, pleasure to have you with us. And not too long ago, you were a hot prospect. And now Jesse James Leha is at 16-0-1 out of San Antonio, and he's taking this fight on very short notice. Yes, uh, he told me that earlier today that he's going to take the fight, that he took the fight on a short notice. But he's very focused. He told me his confidence is up, and he's very focused. So I think uh, being, a good, being a good fighter that he is, I think it would be no problem. Okay, when you look back on your days as a fighter, what was it like for you to take a fight on short notice? What was going through your mind? Well, I did take a few fights on short notice, but what went through my mind was that I have to stay focused, and as long as my confidence is up, I'm ready for the fight. How about Mark Fernandez? He's been sparring with Pernell Whitaker, Eddie Hobson, Romalis Ellis. Now he's fighting in a main event against Jesse James Leha. This is a chance of a lifetime. Oh, yeah, definitely. Fighting, uh, sparring with guys like Whitaker and Hobson and uh, Rollo, um, the other guy, I can't really remember his name off. Ellis. Romalis Ellis. Um, it gives you a plus because you have very good sparring and you're, and, you're, and you're up for a good fight like this here. Fighting a guy like uh, James Leha would really hype you up. And um, Mark Fernandez seems like a very good puncher and a very good boxer. So I think it'll be a very good fight tonight. All right, let's talk a little bit about Ulysses Bolwell. We'll see him first. He claims he's not a knockout puncher, but he has knockout numbers. Right. Uh, he says he's not a puncher, but uh, look at his record. He's a big puncher. I think tonight uh, he will show that he's a better puncher than he, than he perceives in himself. All right, it should be a pleasure. Mark Breland, sit back and enjoy two hours of boxing action from Houston, Texas. We'll get a look at Ulysses Bolwer. He goes off against Roland Williams up next on Sports Channel America. Sports Green presents the Pro Boxing Tour on Sports Channel America, live from Houston, Texas. Ten rounds of the middleweight division. Roland Williams against Ulysses Bolwer. That is our first battle of the evening. Both fighters have made their way into the ring as we get set. For tonight's boxing action, let's take a look at the rules as governed by the Texas Athletic Commission as you get a look at Ulysses Bolwer, 25 years of age. And there is a 10-point must system. Non-scoring referee, three judges. Fighter may not be saved by the bell except in the final round. Three knockdown rule is also in effect. And a technical draw rule. If the fight is stopped due to an unintentional foul after the first round, they'll go to the scorecards and declare a winner. If the fight is stopped during the first round, the bout is a technical draw. And here are the judges for tonight's fights. David McCullough, 10 years of experience out of Houston. Robert Martin, the veteran, 20 years out of Houston, Texas. And Lee McCowan, also out of Houston, six years judging fights. I don't know about him. And the tale of the tape is brought to you by Schlitz Malt Liquor. Just say Bull. Roland Williams at 5'10", Bullwear at 6 foot. Both fighters at 164, 60 pounds. 74 inch reach for both men. Bullwear at 25 and Williams at 24. Those are the key numbers. Now for the introductions. We get set to take you up to our ring announcer, Gordon Woods. The main event and all bouts on the undercard are ruled by the Texas State Boxing Commission, the commissioners at ringside A.C.O. Phillips and Marjorie Arst. The executive director is Rudy Garcia, <laughs> chief inspector Mike Yur, assisted by Roland Brown, Clarence Clemens, Henry Villa Gomez, Ernest Sanchez, Red Weston and Susie Beavers. Your doctors in attendance at ringside for the safety of the fighters, Paris Bransford and Jorge Guerrero. Your three judges doing all the scoring on a 10-point must system, Lee McCowan, Bob Martin, and David McCullough. Your timekeeper is Joe Barba and counting the knockdowns, Tom Gifro and Mr. Tommy Ferris. Your referees working on an alternate basis, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Yates. And in the ring at this time, the man in charge of tonight's opening bout. Let's hear it for nationally known boxing referee and Houston's own 
Chris Jordan. And now, my good friends, fasten your seat belts. It's time for the fist to fly. Ten rounds of boxing in the middleweight division. Introducing first, he's boxing to my left out of the red corner. He wearing the solid black trunks with a gold trim and weighing in today at 160 pounds. This young man with a fine pro career, 19 wins, only 11 defeats, one draw with eight KOs. From the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, he's a former United States Boxing Association welterweight champion, formerly top 10 world contender. Let's hear it for Roland, the Chiller Williams. Williams. to my right out of the blue corner. This young man, he needs no introduction to worldwide boxing fans. A fabulous pro career, 15 wins and only one defeat. 11 of those 15 wins coming by knockout. He too weighing in at a fit fighting and ready, 160 pounds. Managed by Stephen Munisteri and Associates and sponsored by Sportswear. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Ulysses Bowen. <laughs> Ten rounds of boxing in the middleweight division. Your referee, Chris Jordan. No questions. Touch gloves. Go back to your corner and come out boxing. Good and one of the longest introductions you'll find anywhere in boxing we are set Ulysses Bolwer against Roland Williams the 25 year old Bolwer born in Harrisburg Pennsylvania Williams fighting out of Phoenix both fighters are in the black trunks Bolwer has the red and white stripe Williams has the gold lettering on the waist Mark Breland what do you expect early on well, from Bowen, I expect him to use the jab, use a, do a lot of boxing. Uh, from Williams, I think he would try to just sneak attack him, in and out, in and out, just sneak him. Well, Williams is on a bad streak. He's lost two in a row, both of them by knockout. He's lost six of his last seven, knocked out in four of those. Bowen, on the other hand, has won five in a row. Three of those have been knockouts. What Bowen is trying to do right now is just use the jab just to keep him on the outside. I think what's going to happen is Bowen will catch Roland coming in. Bowen in the black with the red and white made it a point of being busy in 1990. He had nine fights in 1990. He was 8-1 with seven knockouts. Mark, can a fighter get tired with that kind of schedule? Uh, yeah, but not if he's winning all of them. He wouldn't get tired. Last minute gone by here in round number one. Eleven of Bolwer's 15 wins have been knockouts, but he told us today he just catches him every now and then. It's not planned. See Williams trying to dance away and buy some time. Halfway point of round one. What he's doing right now is what he should do. Just use the jab, keep him offset on the outside. I think he's using this round just to get a feel of his opponent. Yeah, that's all he's doing. He's filling him out. Uh, he'll catch him coming in because what Roland Williams is doing right now is just trying to sneak attack him in and out, in and out, going to the body, just trying to sneak him. These are middleweights. Ulysses Bolwer and Roland Williams. Mark, could this get frustrating for Bolwer? Yeah, that's why he has to use his jab and just keep doing what he's doing. Uh, Roland would have to stop every now and then to come in. Final 
final seconds of round number one. This one is scheduled for 10. Ulysses Bulware and Roland Williams from Houston, Texas. And we welcome you back to Houston, Texas. Bob Popper along with Mark Freeman. We're joined by the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield, who lives in Houston, Texas. And Evander, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Getting ready for uh, George Foreman, huh, on April 19th. Well, I'm training hard. I'm in my second phase right now. And uh, I guess in three weeks I'll be back. What have you seen in round number one of this fight between Ulysses Bolrair and Roland Williams? Well, um, um, Roland is person attack you know, fight a sneaky fight and uh, and uh, it's hard for uh, Bowyer to catch him. We move ahead with this second round. Bowyer in the black trunks with the red and white striping. Roland Williams in the solid black trunks. trying to fight off the ropes there, trying to sucker Bowler to coming in. A minute gone by in round two. All Bowen needs to do is do stiff jab and keep coming at him because uh, Ron Williams is just running and moving. You need to cut the ring off. Bowler nearly walked into a right hand right there. Bowen stepping, but he's not throwing enough jab. He need to cut the ring off so Roland Williams don't get so much, uh, so agile in the ring. Evander, for you, as far as cutting a ring off, what do you try to do? Usually, uh, you have to establish a jab and not follow the man, uh, but step step to your right, more so to your left. And usually, you have to be first. You can um, uh, be second. And, uh, Seems to me Roland is dictating the fight. And there you're going to look at Williams once again trying to come in. And a right hand fired by Williams as well. Bowler got a shot in of his own. What's, hap what's happening is Williams is catching Bowler on the way in. Bowler is not throwing punches on the way in. He's just walking in. Williams fired off a left hand inside that scored as well here in round number two. It seems that Williams is getting off first, so that's what's really getting Bowyer out of the problem. He's using his jab and he's controlling the tempo of the whole fight. And a right hand by Williams. Got a piece of the shoulder of Bowyer, but it scored. This is round number two. And a right hand by Williams fires in and scores. We now pause for a regional break. Roland Williams and Ulysses Bolwer come to the end of round number two on Sports Channel America. And we welcome you back to Houston, Texas. We begin round number three. Ulysses Bolwer in the black with the red and white striping. Roland Williams in the solid black trunks. Bob Poppel along with Mark Freeland and Evander Holyfield. And we'll start with Mark Freeland. Do you get a sense that Roland Williams is really starting to get confident in this fight? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, he's changed his style from the first round. You notice the first round he did a lot of moving. Now he's standing right there just throwing punches. And Williams scored with another lefty. Vander Holyfield, if you are in the bowlware corner, what do you do to try to change the course of what's going on? Well, I would tell my man, go out there and pressure the fight. Be first, most of all. Flick that jab and, and uh, flick it twice more so than one because uh, Williams counting that jab with a right hand and, uh, and, and tell him pressure and try to get him uh, to the rope because when he do get a rope, he, uh, he get the better change. Well, Bowler got a right hand in, missed with the left hand. Another thing to note, Williams has not fought since September 25th. And he scored. With the right hand, yeah. And then he followed it up with a left as well. Well, this Williams is standing right there just countering him. He's not moving at all. And it's just a change in his style from the first round. And this is throwing Bowler off right now. The dangerous thing is for uh, man to get the momentum and William got the momentum at this time. He's he, he, he dictating the pace and making uh, Bowler fight his fight. William slipping some punches. He scored with a right of his own. But right now, Bowler seemed to get on, on track now. He's using the jab and he pressing the fight and he catching him with that right hand that Mark Tay would catch him with. Surprised that neither fighter uh, has gone to the body a little bit more. Well, what it is, is just so they're, they're concentrating on throwing shots to the head just to get punches in. 
But I think in the later rounds, they will start throwing more punches to the body. See, Bowler getting that jab out. Bowler is starting to push out a jab. He's starting to push his punches. He's starting to lunge more with the jab than just shooting it out. Could he be tired already? I think right now he just, he know that he, uh, he's not winning the fight and he's trying to get it back and he's trying a little too hard still to just pump it out there front. Williams is the man there who scored with the jab. Williams is countering, countering uh, Bowen very good right now. He's staying right inside close. Whenever Bowen throws a jab, he tries to come right back with another one. And again with that right hand inside. Bowler scored as well. Williams fighting back. Good action as we come to the end of round number three. This one is scheduled for ten. Bowler against Williams on Sports Channel America. Uh, and my role work. How about the, this upcoming fight between Mike Tyson and Razor Ruddock? What do you think? It should be a good fight, even though I feel that Mike Tyson will win. But it should be a good fight. Okay, and you will take on George Foreman on April 19th in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Let's take a look at the action as we begin round number four. Ulysses Bolwer and Roland Williams. Bolwer in the black trunks with the red and white striping. Roland Williams in the solid black. And Mark Breland, it seems that Roland Williams is really gaining more and more confidence as we move along. Yes, he is. He's taking control of the fight. He's being first in the fight. Bolwer is just laying back waiting for shots. But um, Roland Williams is just taking control, throwing lots of punches. Now we see Williams on the move again. See, what you have, Wigan is uh, a better fighter than his record indicates. Uh, he, had 30, he had 30 fights, and even though he had lost 11, but he had better fight than what his record indicates. This is where Boa has a chance, but he has to pick his shots. But the only problem he has when he gets him to the ropes is stay right there in front of him and don't give him a different angle. So, will you have a chance to come off the ropes and, and counter him? Right, he's not picking the shots, he's just standing right there in front of him. That's where Williams just come right in, just like that when he throw the combination right off the ropes. How do you give yourself a better angle when you have a guy against the rope? Well, use a jab, use jab to the body, jab to the head, and not just standing straight in front of him. See what Roland Williams did now, and he's going back to the first round like he did. Do a lot of moving, a lot of moving, just trying to attack him on uh, just several punches. Evander, is that enough to win a round with that style? Well, it, yes, it is because what he's doing, he's confusing Bowyer, got him off balance, throwing shots that he shouldn't throw, and he looking to counter on him. Because if Chris D, he is dictating the fight, and the judge is really impressed by a guy who dictate dictate what's going on. Hey, Alicia's Bowyer backing up a little bit. He's trying to get Williams to come to him. What Williams is doing, Williams is trying to frustrate him more. He's got him very, he's got him pretty frustrated as of now. But he's trying to frustrate him even more by dropping his hands, walking into him, and making him slip punches right there. He's, he's walk right into a right hand. Roman Williams is definitely a smart fighter, and he's using the experience that he do have. And he's a bow where he just needs to really pump a jab and dictate the fight and stop waiting. This fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. This is round number four. Closing seconds of the round. Bowler gets the crowd back into it. We're back to Houston after this timeout. Right here, Bowler throws the left hook. And Roland Wimp throws another right hand. And then they just start throwing just punches. Bowler just, I mean, uh, Roland Wimp just slips back and just slips it off the rest of the punches. And we begin round number five of the scheduled 10 round middleweight bout. Mark, how do you see it scored so far? Well, I see Roland Wimp's ahead right now on, on points. Because he took, he took charge of the later round, see, two to four, he took charge. Uh, Bowyer is just using his jab, but he's not throwing enough punches. Vander Holyfield, you feel the same way? Well, I, yeah, I think um, Williams is outscoring him. He's fighting a smarter fight, 
and he dictating the pace, and that a lot got to do with um, him being able to catch nowhere with with the, with the counter right hand that he's been hitting with. And you see some good body shots there by Williams. He dug a left and a right hand inside. See what Williams doing? He's showing him different things every round. Right now he's standing right there. Last round he ran. Right now he's doing a peekaboo style, but throwing a lot of body shots. It seems like Bowler is not making Williams pay. He's just laying out his punches rather than really digging in. Actually, I feel like Bowler is really not connecting with clean shots. He's hitting him on his arm a lot. And so it's kind of frustrating him not to know that he's not hurting the guy with the shots he's throwing. Is this what you mean? He's not creating better angles for himself? Well, yes, because he's hitting him in the same places all the time. He's hitting him on the, on, the, on, the, on the shoulders and on the arm. And Williams seem to get the cleaner shot when he do swing. If you notice, when, Bo, when uh, Roland Williams swings, he swings the uppercuts and overhand rights. Uh, Bowyer is just throwing punches to the arms. Combination by Williams found the mark. Well, William really actually throwing for different angles. That's when he's able to score. And uh, Bowyer is still just head hunting. Head hunting. So Bowyer is just laying out a jab. He's not throwing. He's not snapping the jabs out. He's just laying them out. Bowler off balance there. Williams fired off a right hand. Just over two minutes into this fifth round, scheduled for 10. Roland Williams and Ulysses Bowler from Houston, Texas. Actually, Williams do have Bowler fighting his fight. He got him fighting in close, not, not using his range. And Williams right now can hit him with the jab anytime he wants to. And he's throwing a lot of good combinations. And let's not forget some of those body shots that Williams scored with earlier. That may tell a tale later on in this fight. What's happening right now, Bowler is just walking in. He's not throwing as many punches. He's not throwing enough punches. just walking in, and he'll throw two or three jabs, and then Roland Williams just throw off with a good combination. Time remaining in round number five. Here, this is Bowler and Roland Williams. We have an upset in the making. Second half of the fight after this timeout on Sports Channel America. Jesse James Leha, 16-0-1 with 10 knockouts out of San Antonio, Texas. We'll take center stage tonight. Our main event on Sports Channel America. Leha squares off against Mark Fernandez. We begin round number six of the scheduled 10 round. Middleweight bout between Ulysses Bowler and the black trunks with the red and white trim against Roland Williams in the solid black. Bob Papo along with Mark Freeland and Evander Holyfield in Houston, Texas. And some stern words, Mark Freeland, for Bowler in between the round by his corner. Well, I can understand that because Bowler is not throwing, he's not throwing enough punches. The punches that he is throwing are not hard punches. They're just laid out there. Evander Holyfield, uh, you have an interesting corner. You have the demonstrative Lou Duva, who yells and screams a lot, and then you have the very calm Georgie Benton. What kind of effect does that have on you? Well, um, of course, everybody needs someone that can really motivate them, but they also need someone that can, can speak real softly and clearly where they can hear. It's all depending on the fighter that you have and knowing your fighter, knowing what to say to him. Sometimes you can turn them off with harsh words. Right now, Roland Wim. Uh, he stumbled. He doesn't slip, yeah. Right now, Williams is moving again, and is really throwing Bowler off. After a tongue lashing like Bowler received in between rounds five and six, is there a tendency to maybe come out and try too hard to make something happen? Yeah, that, that can happen. That, that, that has a tendency to happen when, when, a, when a trainer talks to a fighter like that. All the time, they tend to make him run into shots over punch and he throwing one big shot and Williams a smart fighter got good movement he gonna run into something out of all of that Williams was only hit by one punch he right here on the ropes Ulysses didn't throw enough punches he just threw one or two punches but they weren't hard punches he's trying too hard he's lunging with the jab and uh, Roland Williams can come over with a good punch after that After watching Roland Williams tonight, he is showing a full repertoire of different things to do in the ring. Well, Williams is a smart fighter. He's the smartest fighter in there, and he knows his skills is on. He, he know when to go to the body, know when to go to the head, and really know how to tie him up. I think right now he's just confusing Bowler, and Bowler don't actually don't know how to fight this type of fighter. He's confusing Bowler with the grabbing. He's, he's making him think that he's real tight and he want to hold him. 
but he's not going to do it too much. Bogart scores with a right hand, and Williams holds on again. Closing seconds of round number six. Williams being warned for holding. Back with more after this. Roland Wynn throws a jab right here. Uh, Bowen throws two jabs. Just, then throws just a slightly right hand. Nothing hard. And as we start round number seven, it's back to the roper dope for Roland Williams. Let's see if he can capitalize on it the way he did earlier. Roland Williams is showing so many different things. It's really confusing uh, Bowen. I really think right now is Williams really giving, giving away the fight. And I think he's taking too many excess punches on the arms and the head, and I, and I do believe that he's getting tired. Evander, that will tire you out, even if you're blocking punches, correct? Getting well, hit by him? Sure, uh, that's something that George Havel do to hit the guy on the arm, and, it, and his arm get tired and stiff, and he start to drop, and then you, you're able to land uh, good body shots. Williams shot a counter right there, but Bowyer stood his ground. Minute gone by here in round number seven. What Bowyer should do right now, don't pity that jab. Throw a hard jab. Make him respect your jab. And when he throws that lazy jab, he's susceptible to that right hand. Exactly, exactly what just happened. Right, right now, I think what would happen, condition would come into play. I think the man with the better condition is the man going to end up winning this fight. Some blood in the mouth of Williams. There have been no knockdowns to this point. Just past the midway point of round seven. Good shot. Bowyer is connected now. He's using the jab and hitting it with good right hand. And you notice he's going to the body more than he's been going in the previous round. If you notice, uh, Williams' mouth is wide open. Bowyer should start throwing more body shots and throwing more uppercuts. Looks like Bowyer, even when he had Williams in front of him, stepped to the side to just give himself a different angle to score with that right. Well, his corner people now tell him to move to the side, give him a different angles. And now that he's doing a different angle, he's able to, he's able to hit Roland. Roland Williams is very tired right now. I think a good shot from Bowyer would take him down. If he uses a good jab, because he's not covering up his face with his hands. Well, there's two right hands from Bowyer. Roland Williams is ready to go any minute now if Bowyer throws the right shots. Williams trying to answer back. Bowyer making the mistake of not using a strong jab he here. He needs to use a stiff jab right there. Williams is very tired. Good body shot. He's rolling Williams out of gas. He'll get another round. We'll be back after this timeout. This is expecting the birth of their first child, but James trying to keep his mind focused on tonight's main event. He squares off against Mark Fernandez here in Houston, Texas. The sports team presents the pro boxing tour. Right here, Bowler throws a good right hand, another good right hand. Roland Williams is very tired right here, and he's not covering up his face. He's covering up the side of his face. And we start round number eight. Of uh, the scheduled 10 rounder. Vander Holyfield, what does Bowler have to do to put Williams away? Well, actually, now that if he keeps the pressure on him, I think uh, fatigue is setting in with Williams, and I just think a Bowler is a better conditioned fighter, and I think if, if he just stick to the game plan, use that jab, and, and catch with that right hand, he'll be able to take him. I think a Bowler would step in with jab, use the jab, use a hard stick jab. Because Roland Williams is covering the side of his face. Throw a good one-two, a good hook, and a good body shot. I think everything would come in right on hand. Because Williams is very tired and he has his hands down. So you can't miss his head. But we're sticking out jab. He's hitting him. He needs to stick out a hard jab. Well, when he gets lazy with his jab, Williams has been able to counter with the right hand. Exactly. That's what he waits for. on target, but he needs to use his, his uh, reach a little bit more so than getting in close, because when he do get in close, he give William a chance to punch out with him. Now referee Chris Jordan wants them to work on the tape 
on the left glove of 25-year-old Ulysses Bowyer. I guess his break is going to help Roland Williams a little bit. I think it helped both of them. Both of them are fatigued right now. I think Bowyer needs to put pressure on him, like Evander said. Put pressure on him. Back him up. Still give him a chance. He's giving his man time to really get rest and, and get a, a little bit more energy to come back and throw two or three hard shots. So I feel right now he got his man at right now where he, he's in trouble, but he's got to keep that relentless pressure on him and force the referee to come in there and stop the fight. Right here, just throw punches. He needs to just throw punches because Williams is very tired. It almost looked like Bolwer was confused. Well, what happened, if you notice, the first couple of rounds, uh, Roland Williams would cover up and just lash out. But right now, he's covering up and not lashing out as, as he was in a few, a few rounds ago. And for Ulysses Bolwer, he's in some uncharted waters. Never been past the eighth round. Williams. Bowler misses to the left of his own. Williams is very tired. He's just, he's just sitting back, leaning back. I think Bowler should just put pressure on him, put his hands up and walk at him and just throw punches. Final 10 seconds of round number eight. Bowler trying to put it on. Back him up to the rope and just throws a barrage of punches. That's what he needs to do for the rest of the fight, just throw a lot of punches. And we are underway with round number nine of the scheduled 10-round middleweight bout. Mark Greenland, how do you see this one on your scorecard? Well, right now it's pretty close. Um, I have it pretty even right now. No, not even. I still have uh, Williams up around a round or two. But I think Bowen will have to put pressure on now. Williams is tied. He has to put pressure on him. Vander Holyfield, how do you see? I feel that the fight is real close. These two rounds is going to be the design side of factor of this fight. I think right now, um, Bowyer in the, the better condition fighter right here. He's scoring more now, and I think the judge seemed to forget about what happened earlier, and he, he went in his last few rounds. Bowyer needs to stay on top of him, be the aggressor for the last two rounds. Williams is trying to just throw two or three combinations but um, if, if uh, Bowen stays on top of him, he it would it wouldn't be able to do it. And Williams pushing out some combinations of his own. Well, I feel that it's sure determination on both guys' part. And don't nobody really know what these guys are going through right now. Um, this was fighting all about when both guys are tired and they're able to uh, get that little breath that they need to continue to fight like this. So it's been a good fight, action-packed fight, and both guys have thrown plenty of punches and received plenty of them. Williams is doing some scoring of his own in the past 30 seconds or so. Like, like Ivana said, you don't know what's going through his mind. He's just sitting there and like, ah. It's, you know, it's very hard for a person who's not a fighter to understand this type of bomb. Ivana Holyfield, Mark Williams, is this what separates guys that win and go on to be champions and guys who don't are the ones who can in this type of situation when you're tired and beaten up to suck it up and be able to pull out the win? For sure. This fight here, uh, be a character in a fighter. Anybody can fight, but when it gets tough like that, uh, the champion to have it in his heart is always find the way to bring it out. And I'm sure at times everybody feel like quitting, but a champion don't quit. A champion make it happen or lose it, let it happen. Now, Bowler trying to answer back in the final 20 seconds of this ninth round, but Roland Williams has done some pretty good scoring of his own in this round. This is a tough one to score. Yeah, Bowler, I think Bowler uh, connected with more punches this round, but um, Roland Williams is right there. He's sticking in right there with him. We'll be back with the 10th and final round after this timeout on Sports Channel America.
And we welcome you back to Houston, Texas. Bob Papa along with Mark Breland and Evander Holyfield to get set for the start of this 10th and final round. Ulysses Bolwer is up and Roland Williams trying to get as much rest as possible. It's very important. This round is a very crucial round and a man that I think it have it in better condition would win this fight. I think what uh, Bowen should do right now is use a good jab, use a stiff jab, box him right now. He doesn't have to really punch with him, but just, just do a lot of boxing. Bowen fighting in his hometown of Houston in this obviously partial crowd, rooting him on. That's got to help when you have the fans cheering for you. You know, Bowen has the better jab. He just needs to use it now and throw more effective punches. want to cover up, but we should just throw punches. Does Roland Williams have enough gas in this final round? Oh, he knows this is the last round. That's why he's just sitting there waiting. He's trying to counter punch. He's trying to get him one good, one or two good shots. Boy needs to jab. Scored coming in. Evander will there become a point in this fight in this last round where Williams may have to just take a chance and just rush Bowler? Well, I think um, a champion would because he realized that he, he cannot let, let this man dictate this pace throughout this whole fight, then he's going to lose it. He's in his man's hometown, and the fight is very close, and it could go either way right now at this point in time. Now we get a timeout in the action because. The tape is loose on the left glove again of Bolwer, and for Williams this could really be beneficial because he could charge up a little bit. He's got to make a final rush. Oh yeah, well, it's a good breather for him right now. I think for both of them. Uh, I think both of them have to come out now and just throw a lot of punches. Whoever wins this round, I think will win the fight. It's such a close fight. And referee Chris Jordan lets them continue. Maybe Williams heard you, Mark. <laughs> been some effort from both fighters. Yeah, but I think in this in this round, Bowen is going for it all, and I think um, William is waiting. I think he's using all this energy to just move around and going to cause him to fight. Exactly, Bowen is standing up on him. He's throwing, he's putting a lot of pressure up on him. He's making Roland Williams move. And Williams has thrown and landed few punches in this round as he takes a right hand. That's Bowler a pressure attack, and I feel that that's going to win the fight here. Yeah, right there. Williams only managed one punch in that sequence. Bowler, you know, Bowler can feel it right now that he's winning the fight, and he's winning his round. And he's going to try to pour it on here near the end of the tenth and final round. Well, you see right now, William just trying to hold on. He's just trying to survive this round because Bowen is really humming. And the bell sounds, and the fans stand here in Houston, Texas. Very good fight by Ulysses Bowen and Roland Williams as they slug it out for 10 rounds. Mark, who do you think won? I'd give it, I'd give it to Louis. Uh, Ulysses Bowler. I thought it, the last four or five rounds, he just took over the last four or five rounds. Evander Holyfield? It was a very close fight, and uh, I think the fight could go either way, but I truly feel that Bowler poured it on at the end, and I think at the end it count uh, a little bit more than beginning because the judge kind of forget who started to fight on, but they do realize who finished it, and he finished up strong. How about when guys fight in their hometown? You were in Las Vegas Saturday night when you saw Greg Haugen win a controversial decision against uh, Hector Macho Camacho. Well, yeah, that was, very, that was a funny decision, but I guess when you're at home, sometimes, you know, blessings just hit you more so than another opponent. <laughs> <laughs> well put, Evander Holyfield. And right now, both men in the ring having their gloves removed and Ulysses Bolwer 
Received a little bit of a scare from Roland Williams. This is a guy who had lost six of his last seven. Did Williams, he had lost two in a row. He had been knocked out four times in seven fights. But he showed a lot of different skills in the ring, Mark Breland. We'll take a look at some of the action. We'll see Ulysses Bolware here near the end of the fight taking control. Well, this is Bolware right now coming on. Use a good jab. Just coming and stepping in with the right hand, throwing body shots, uppercuts. Uh, he knew Roland Williams was tired right now <laughs> as he lays on him. Take a we go again, right hand. here. Jab to the body, right hand to the top of the head. Another right hand. Uh, another right hand. <laughs> Boer knew that uh, Roland Williams was tired, so he knew, he knew he had to keep the pressure on. Ulysses Boer pacing the ring, waiting for the judge's decision. What's, go what's going through your mind? Evander, we'll start with you. Well, I feel that, you know, in a, in a fight like this, both guys gave their all, and they hoping that they did enough to win, and because they really don't know, because when you're in that fight, it's hard to judge because you fight. But uh, if you know what's going on, you better believe you ain't fight. Both of them guys fought, and then they just waiting on the judge to um, make that decision, just hoping that they the man that got the victory. Well, both men pacing. We are waiting for the official decision. Let's find out. Here's our ring announcer, Gordon Woods. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 terrific action-packed rounds of boxing, I give you the scoring by points as follows. David McCullough scores about 97-93. Judge Bob Martin, he scores about 98-92, as does Judge Lee McCowan. He, too, scores about 98-92 for the winner by unanimous decision, Ulysses Bowen. So Ulysses Bowen, a little bit of a lopsided uh, decision by two of the judges, Mark Greenland. I thought it was. I don't think they were watching the fight. <laughs> Evander Holyfield? Well, I, think, I think it was um, a good fight, a, a lot closer fight than what, uh, what the judge indicated, but even though I felt that Ulysses was able to pull it off at the end and win the fight, but it should have been a lot closer. For Ulysses Bolware now a 